morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. My voice is totally shot. Uh, sorry, I think it's a leftover cold from my flight on Sunday. I could feel it coming the last two days and it hit this morning. But that doesn't stop Morning Movie News and I have three very cool stories I think to cover today that I'm pretty excited about. They're chock full of details though, so I might be referring to my notes over here. So that's where I'm looking occasionally just to make sure I get it exactly right. Uh, okay, first story, a lot of requests to cover this yesterday. That's the news that they are going to introduce the Flash in the uh, CW's tele hit television show Arrow uh, in an a episode, a couple episode arc, I believe it's going to be like three episodes, and then they're going to spin him off into his own series from the same creative team behind Arrow. Uh, so this was met with great fanfare yesterday because Arrow is one of the few uh, hits, I think, you know, unabashed hits for uh, Warner Brothers in DC, uh, where everybody's happy with the way it's turned out and it has a big fan base. It, you know, it's kind of taken over for Smallville, but in a way, I've talked about it here before, that the fan base is so strong and, and is so happy with the results that you have a situation where people are like, why can't this green, this green Arrow be in the movie Justice League, you know, the Justice League movie version? And that's pretty amazing for people to feel a television show character could make that leap, especially when you have Marvel starting to blur the lines with uh, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this fall. What do I think of this news? I think that uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. works because it's like the, it's like, um, forgive me, I'm sorry, like the C-list characters, uh, and sometimes not even characters that you would, you know, that would ever have any hope of making it into a movie. But I feel like to divide the, literally divide the Justice League here between movies and television is problematic. Uh, Wonder Woman is also still being considered mostly for television. I, her, she's been sidelined again but they still, that's where Warner Brothers likes having her. So more, the more details on this Flash introduction, Barry Allen's, it's going to be Barry Allen, because Jeff Johns is behind this, and we all know Jeff Johns loves Barry Allen, and Barry Allen will be introduced as a regular human, so his origin story will take place on Arrow. And I think, you know, I guess speed is a, is a special effect that's doable on television, and the producers are arguing that, you know, the Flash is a better television property than a movie property. But as I just said, you know, I feel that separating the Justice League like this is a mistake. I think it just proves that a Justice League movie is really far away. I would say not even on the map cinematically at this point. And that, you know, clearly uh, Warner Brothers and DC are going to focus on their Batman and Superman properties and, and, you know, melding them in 2015 with the Man of Steel sequel. Uh, by the way, two small side notes. Uh, I have to say, if you have not seen how it should have ended this uh, quick super cafe, bit on Man of Steel uh, 2 with featuring Batman. It's short but brilliant. I highly recommend you check, you check it out. And also, uh, I guess maybe DC knew about this, but you know they launched a DC uh, Batman Superman comic book uh, for Man of Steel when Man of Steel came out. And it's actually pretty good. I mean, it's largely based on the art. That's what makes it really good from uh, Jai Lee. But if you're, not if, you, if you're into comics at all, I highly recommend you you check it out. It's it's pretty well done. I, I'm enjoying it at least. It's only on issue two, so you can totally catch up. So uh, I don't know. I, everybody here knows that I have problems with uh, the whole way that Warner Brothers handles their DC properties, and I can I I continue to think they don't think big picture enough. I feel that there's no uh, visionary over there guiding the entire thing, and I think they're just all over the place. And I think that they're looking for a potential short-term success with the Flash. Uh, a television show and they are ignoring the long-term success that an eventual, ju eventual Justice League movie could bring them uh, and they should be building towards that. Although I do agree, World's, World's Finest should come first, but as I said, there should have been a Man of Steel sequel, uh, just pure sequel before that and maybe introduce some other characters in their own films. Uh, I think the Marvel recipe works and I think uh, DC shouldn't be so concerned with playing catch-up, they should be concerned with getting it right. Okay, so, so that's the first story of the day. Uh, the second story is that it's really interesting to see a number of key behind-the-scenes people for some of your favorite directors becoming directors themselves. Uh, as, you, as you've probably heard, uh, Christopher Nolan's DP, Wally Pfister, has his own film that he's shooting right now called Transcendence. It comes out in 2014. It stars uh, Johnny Depp and Kate Mara. Uh, and also, the interesting thing is that, I see I'm going to refer to my notes here, it has several uh, Nolan regulars in the cast. you got Morgan Freeman, Cillian Murphy, Rebecca Hall, uh, and also Paul Bettany. I'm so happy to see Paul Bettany on screen again. I'm, I'm a big Paul Bettany fan. But uh, the film is about artificial intelligence and kind of like, a, you know, trying to, there's this... Uh, 
these business people, apparently from the uh, from the synopsis, who are trying to create an intelligence that's smarter than humans, that can do things that humans can't. And then there's a faction, uh, an anti-technology faction, that's against them. It sounds very Nolan-esque, you know, when you when you think about it. Uh, but you know, the logline they're kind of floating out now is that this AI, someone uploads their personality to become the AI, and the question is, does that person then influencing the internet uh, through their personality? that way or is their personality twisted once it's uploaded and they become it becomes something entirely different I find this whole connection interesting because Paul there's a lot of uh, when I did my um, Tony Stark creates Ultron video after the news that Avengers 2 would be Age of Ultron a lot of you pointed out that Jarvis could be manipulated to become Ultron and I thought how wonderful for Paul Bettany because he's the voice of Ultron that I mean he's the voice of Jarvis who would become Ultron but how wonderful for Paul Bettany that the poor guy has had to be behind the scenes on one of the biggest franchises franchises of all time, uh, the third most success, third and fourth, I believe, at this point, or third and fifth most, success, second and fifth most successful films of all time, uh, Avengers, uh, the Avengers and Iron Man 3, and he never gets any face time, never gets any credit. I believe a lot of you mistakenly also credit his voice work to someone else sometimes. I forget who you were crediting, but I've seen some people say that Jarvis is voiced by someone else. So I would love it if he got to then ultimately play Ultron. That would be fantastic. But you have to wonder, is he already going to be involved? He's already involved in this artificial intelligence storyline here with Wally Pfister. So I think that's interesting. But the, the, the big news that came out yesterday was that in addition to Wally Pfister, um, uh, Angus Wall, the editor for David Fincher, both for um, The Social Network and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Oscar-winning editor, is finally getting to direct his own film. It's called Empire. Uh, the, the, it's being kept heavily under wraps, obviously, uh, the, the, which is refreshing, I guess. <laughs> and it's written by the guy who wrote Source Code. Source Code is the, the Duncan Jones follow-up to Moon. Very well-made movie, although, as I said when I initially when I reviewed it when it came out, I, within like five minutes. If, if you're, I, it would be interesting. It's an interesting test. I think if you're very keen to genres, if you read a lot of genre work and see a lot of genre movies. You know, I figured out what was going on like in five minutes, you know, it, it, so it was just more, more or less watching the movie catch up. But still, it, it was a quality film, you know, I, even though I guessed it, I still think that it was certainly a lot better than a lot of the scripts are coming at this summer. So I think that's exciting. I think it's wonderful. I, I, I'll be interested to know how much Fincher and Nolan are responsible for these people breaking out under, from underneath them, but it's really nice. You know, it's usually a writer, is only, the writing is the only path to directing, so it's wonderful to see editors and DPs. You know, DPs do cross over a lot, I guess, but not to the same extent. But it's great to see this talent who's helped make these great films. Because directors get a lot of credit uh, when a lot of people made the film. And I know the director's the visionary, but still, this, uh, these other qualities are very important. So it's great. Congratulations to Angus Wall and Wally Pfister. It's always great to see new talent come to the table. All right, third story of the day. Uh, Fetty Alvarez, who directed the Evil Dead remake, the notoriously gruesome Evil Dead remake, just sold a sci-fi action pitch, uh, pitch called uh, Mich uh, Mich um, Machina or Machina. It's not. It's not the YouTube uh, conglomerate, but uh, uh, Machina. Machina, maybe that's what it is. And it's a sci-fi action film. He just sold the pitch. He's going to co-write it with the guy he usually works with. But I think it's interesting, even though they're not saying anything about what it's what the plot is or what the details. Uh, I, it was a chance to catch up and see how the Evil Dead did in theaters, and it made 100 million worldwide, but only 54 stateside, which I thought was interesting. It cost 17 million to make, so it's still, it still was a success. It still turned a profit, but it's interesting that these horror movies are so low budget that they're able to really be considered successes when they, it's rare for them to make a lot of money, and for rare for them to get anywhere near 100 million here in the United States, which is the usual benchmark for a successful film. But the horror genre, as I just said, is so inexpensive, it's designed to succeed in even the harshest environments. But anyway, I think that, you know, I think it's pretty safe to, it's a pretty safe bet that this new pitch, this new sci-fi action pitch is also cheap, because I think that, you know, that kind of box office performance for Evil Dead, I don't think Fede Alvarez is quite there yet to, to be trusted with a large budget. To, to reap it back. But sci-fi action, that's a bigger arena, a much more likely chance to turn in, to make some more money and maybe get his District 9 and, you know, then he'll get his Elysium. So those are the three stories of the day. Write down your thoughts below what you think. Thanks for tuning in to Morning Movie News. It's good to be back. It was good to have so many people uh, excited to see it back yesterday. And I again, I appreciate your patience while it was out of commission during the whole Comic-Con time. So Comic-Con is crazy. And my voice got a little better after talking to you. All right, so I will, uh, more videos coming later today. And, of course, Morning Movie News will be back tomorrow.
Bye.